Both diabetes and Alzheimer's disease are epidemic and, and rapidly increasing. There are 34 million type 2 diabetics today and over 6 million Alzheimer's disease patients, and they overlap. The Mayo Clinic has reported that 81% of their Alzheimer's patients also have either impaired glucose tolerance or type 2 diabetes. This really is a growing epidemic. It's driven by obesity and an aging population and the type 2 diabetes epidemic. They all feed together and create a problem for care that's not sustainable the way we're working with it now. We need something that arrests the disease early in the disease so that people can maintain their independence. The majority of, of work in Alzheimer's has been focused on a single uh, aspect, and that's uh, amyloid beta. And amyloid beta is only a small fraction of all the inflammatory pathways that are affecting Alzheimer's disease. Working on the overarching mechanism of inflammation and insulin sensitivity will improve the outcome in clinical trials in a way that has not been seen with an amyloid beta agents. Simply put, we are trying to stop the inflammation that drives neurodegeneration and other serious diseases. We were studying anti-inflammatory molecules in humans and found a molecule that was there in vanishingly small quantities. We synthesized that molecule, injected it into mice, and showed that it was safe and had anti-inflammatory activity. We then modified the compound to make it orally bioavailable, and that's NE3107. When we tested NE3107, we found that it preserved the safety and the activity of the original metabolite. Clarence and I have been working on these molecules for 20 years. In, in 2006, we developed an anti-inflammatory insulin sensitizer for type 2 diabetics. A decade later, we began to pursue the links between inflammation, insulin resistance, and Alzheimer's disease. The journey here hasn't always been smooth. We've had a drug with not a well-characterized mechanism of action for a long time, and when you don't have that characterization, you have a lot of doubters. And when you have doubters, it's hard to raise money, it's hard to get people to believe in what you're doing, it's hard to get the backing. And that's really been the major frustration we've had. We've only very recently been able to overcome that and understand much better how our drug works. Inflammation drives a positive feedback loop, leading to chronic low-grade inflammation that's the basis of many of these diseases. We know that NE3107 has been able to inhibit the pro-inflammatory kinases that phosphorylate and inhibit insulin action, as well as decreasing inflammation in the macrophages and microglia that lead to chronic inflammation and neurodegeneration in Alzheimer's disease. NE3107 is able to break that cycle in two major inflammatory nodes, ERK and NF-kappa-B, but it inhibits them selectively and does not affect the homeostatic functions of either ERK or NF-kappa-B, and that is critical for our safety as we move into a phase three trial. Our trial is for safety, of course, and to look at improvement in cognition and in memory, but importantly also in functional activities of these patients. We've been ready for a breakthrough for years. It's about time. There's always a potential for this to be the breakthrough. It focuses at the early steps um, of Alzheimer's disease and the neuroinflammation. So that might be of great benefit to hopefully prevent the disease or slow the disease uh, in its course. It is very important that we uh, carefully evaluate it in a clinical trial process, testing it on volunteers in the community and looking at the effects of the treatment. So it's early to say whether it will definitely be, but it definitely has potential. There are gonna be about 30 clinical sites involved with the trial. And it's important to have a number of different investigators so that you don't have a single investigator's bias in the way they perform the test dominating the results. And so your results are really representative of a broad uh, swath of the population. You get to really a very representative result. Right now we're, you know, at the end of this 15 year period leading up to the, the trial, we're at the point where we can finally prove out what we've been, you know, really working hard on. We're challenged by understanding what this drug wouldn't be able to do in terms of chronic diseases. Clarence right now is working on a Parkinson's disease protocol. 
And in addition to neurodegeneration, we're actually doing work to look at uh, certain cancers where inflammation is driving the same thing. So the sky is the limit right now. We do have a unique drug in the terms of its profile, its combination of physical and chemical characteristics, its safety profile, and the way it works. And so it's uniquely positioned to address the, all this complexity of the Alzheimer's as a disease. And we hope, you know, produce the, the breakthrough that everyone's been waiting for.